Hi, my name is Tegan Davies, and if you're like me, then you are on your way to becoming a history or social studies teacher in a public school. You may have questions like, how do I make sure I'm not the boring history teacher? How do I engage my students? How do I help my students care about these topics? Or how do I help my students become good U.S. citizens? I know I have questions like that. If you have these questions, you're going to want to get your hands on this book, Teaching What Really Happened by James W. Lowen. I recently read this book, and some of the main ideas that stood out to me from this, there are three that I've identified, are first, too many teachers are using textbooks that are outdated and don't present accurate information about history. And it's hard because a lot of students believe the textbooks. Lowen shares many examples throughout the book of students who were given inaccurate information about history, maybe they were given a partial story, or were only given information that portrayed the United States and its leaders in a rose-colored light. Unfortunately, when students only get the, the happy picture of history, they're misinformed and they don't know how to make decisions in a world where those past events shaped what's going on in our world today. I want to share a really brief quote from the book that kind of highlights this main theme. He says, our past is not so horrific that if teachers let students see what happened, they will become bad Americans. Surely we are teaching the course so that they might become good Americans, citizens able to think about the past and make intelligent decisions about the future. To do this, what students need is not feel-good history. Neither, of course, do they need guilt-ridden, feel-bad history. They need to know what happened, what caused it, and what it in turn causes even today. This is one of the main themes that he continues on through, he continues on about throughout the book. There's a few recommendations from Lowen about these textbook issues that are so often seen in classrooms. He recommends always having a college level textbook in your classroom, having multiple textbooks from different years, and to only use your textbook as an aid. Your class is not the textbook. You are not the textbook. Don't be afraid to step away from it and just use it as an aid. Theme number two, twigs, trees, and forests. This is a theme that Lowen comes back to time and time again in his book. Twigs are the facts, the maybe the dates, the places, obscure details that so many history classes focus on and want you to memorize. Lowen argues that there are far too many twigs in history. Trees are gonna be the main topics you'll cover in your class, and they will help you organize which twigs students do need to remember. Lowen recommends each teacher come up with 30 to 50 trees at the beginning of the school year that you think students should know. You should be able to back up why your students should know about that topic and what you want them to remember about that tree in 20 years. Your trees will then make up your forests. Your forests are your major themes that you will refer to throughout the year. I'm going to do an activity in just a minute that's going to show you how you can help your students identify those forests or specific themes in the groupings of trees that you'll present throughout the year. Finally, number three, the last theme from the book that I'm gonna discuss is to help your students do history. Lowen emphasizes that your students need to be able to do history. This includes helping your students answer questions like, who wrote this? Why is there a monument here? What point of view did they leave out? And to do that, they need to know four steps, be able to do four steps. One, locate the speaker, audience, and era of a given resource, given event. They need to look for internal contradictions and external contradictions is number three. And the last thing they need to do is called verse 10. This is a word I never heard before, but basically it refers to understanding the actions from the actor's point of view. In other words, you want your students to step into the shoes of these characters from history and help them see maybe why did they do the things they did? What was their thought process in acting in the way they did or making the decisions they did? Once students know those four steps, they can do history and transfer it into other areas of their life, like writing papers, doing oral history, involving their families, and looking at maybe the local history that surrounds them. While I did really enjoy this book, there were some strengths and weaknesses that I wanna discuss. A specific strength, Lowen does an incredible job of mapping out examples of what his major themes throughout the book will look like in practice. It's obvious that he's an educator because he provides detailed examples of how something will actually look when put into motion in the classroom. One weakness I noticed, 
there were a few points of the book where it felt like Lowen was just extremely passionate about a certain subject. For example, the injustices of standardized testing, which is important. I'm not trying to take away from the injustices of standardized testing, but it felt a little disconnected from some of the major themes of his book, which is really about teaching history for what it for what it really was, for what really happened instead of this rose-colored view of history. One thing that I thought was cool is I noticed that this book helped me connect something we've talked about in class recently to actual teaching, which is trying to socialize learning by involving our students' families and maybe their culture in their learning. Lowen mentions the idea of maybe talking to your families, your students' families, about the history that they're learning and having your students ask their families questions about the events. What do they remember? What do they understand about the history? And then being able to explain what they've learned. Being able to conversate about these topics will really help them stay with your students. Next, I want to talk about how this book can be applied in social studies classrooms. I think this book is going to be very useful for social studies teachers that maybe weren't feeling confident that they can create their own curriculum without using a textbook. This book is going to give teachers the tools to step away from outdated textbooks and teach students about history from all different points of view. This will also help teachers know that they can teach their students the good, the bad, and the ugly of history. You don't need to feel like you have to paint a perfect picture of the founding fathers or the past or whatever event it may be that you're nervous to teach to students. When students are really learning what truly happened in history, they get excited and want to know more. Let's go ahead and demonstrate an activity from this book that I think will be useful in my future classroom. In teaching what really happened, Lowen describes an idea that we could apply in our future classrooms. Basically, somewhere in the class, whether it's on a poster or on the whiteboard, you're going to want to identify some themes that the different topics you're going to be teaching throughout the year will connect to. In other words, your forests that the trees will be a part of. So I've listed out some here that might be on my future whiteboard in my classroom. And as I'm teaching throughout the semester, I might pause in the middle of the lecture and have my students look at the poster and identify which themes could these topics be related to that we're learning about. For example, if we're learning about the Columbian Exchange, they might realize that we're talking a lot about diffusion, which is one of our themes that we want to know about throughout the year. Teaching What Really Happened by James Lowen really helped me feel confident that I can teach my future students about really what happened in the past without feeling like I need to dance around the bush and maybe stay away from more difficult topics. I feel more excited to create my own curriculum without just relying on the future textbook I might have. And so I would encourage you, if you're planning on teaching history, to get a copy of this book and read it. It might help you feel more confident in your classroom as well.